Hi everyone, Thixus here once again, and I wanted to thank you all for the amazing feedback and support in my last video. A shout out to some of you as well that actually commented on the last video right here. In the last guide, we took a deep dive into the strategies of the finals, and if you haven't watched that video first, I strongly recommend it as it will likely change your perspective on the game entirely. Introducing Vertigo, a player that has achieved top ranks in Valorant, Apex Legends, Overwatch and CSGO, not only did he dominate in Warzone, boasting Poland's top KD ratio of 6.12 and having top performances in kill races, he's also had a history of top scores across many tasks in most played aim trainers, followed by in-game and aim coaching. Together, we'll break down the nuances of the medium role, picking his brain to bring you guys invaluable insights that could be the difference between a tournament victory and a first round knockout. At the heart of a team in the finals lies the medium player, which at a basic stance is a blend of raw firepower and strategic utility. But what truly defines this versatile role? Well, firstly, medium is a multi-layered role, the utility that Medium has is massive, acting as a kind of backbone that supports and sets up crucial plays for the team's overall success. The role of a Medium doesn't just end there though, because the Medium player can even emerge as the top fragger, dealing high damage per second. Because of this, I think that the duality of Medium makes them very valuable to every team's composition. Taking a deep dive into Medium's loadouts, we certainly have a lot of options that we're gifted with. Starting off with the weapons. Now, there's currently a debate going around where the question is, should mediums choose the AK or the SCAR? Fight. Hands down the AK. The SCAR, whilst dealing more damage, simply falls short on ammo, which in turn affects the overall output of damage compared to the AK. For the ability, Vertigo uses the healing beam that's the most crucial thing for mediums. However, for beta 3, there's currently an eye on how the turrets are currently performing. They used to be in a better place, but patches to the game over time had reduced the value that it brings into the game. For gadgets, you undoubtedly want to use the defibrillator, as this is the main reason for even choosing mediums in the first place. The defibrillator allows you to instantly revive a downed teammate and then get them right back into the action. A few extra tips if you're going to use the defibrillator is that when you revive a teammate, they will be spawned back in with 50% health. Going for a full revive, they will be spawned back in with 100% health. I would actually say that if you are certain that you have the all clear, sometimes you can save the defibrillator and full revive normally. Another tip is that if you attempt to revive in the midst of battle, make sure that your teammate knows if he has ammunition, otherwise he's going to have an awkward staring contest against the other opponents whilst he performs a reload. Now remember that mobility is your biggest strength in this game, so you need to prioritize enabling quick rotations, and it's also super useful to give your team head starts in terms of timing. Depending on how you want to play the game, you can choose to simply use a combination of the zip line and jump pad to abuse the vertical and horizontal mobility in the game. The jump pad should mainly be a priority on your loadout, as you can use slanted surfaces such as floors, bridges, or rooftops to quickly progress across the map. But overall, the difference between the zip line and jump pad is really a personal preference, but try experimenting on how creative you can be with both of these gadgets. Some extra tips is that if you're actually sliding and place down a jump pad at mid-slide, you can actually carry that forward momentum with you and have a better trajectory towards the opponents. This is actually amplified when the in-game event low gravity is active. You can also do things like placing the jump pad onto walls if you really want to make some crazy plays. For the zip line, this can actually be spammed once you travel over the wards where the rope is, to allow you to really put off your opponent. And this mechanic can really make some of your kills look very flashy, but I would kind of recommend not doing it for too long, otherwise the other player would, you know, eventually be able to try and take you down, but doing it for some time can really put the other player off. Mauser also gave some great advice with the jump pad and zip combo that he prefers to use for his medium build, in which you can actually combine both of them one after the other to continue that forward momentum to give you extra movement across the map. I think a good example is a top character in Apex Legends that ba basically has nothing in her kit except excellent vertical mobility. That alone makes killing her 10 times harder. If you haven't realized, the finals has essentially 100% accuracy mid-air, so instant padding during a fight is really beneficial if you can track your enemies effectively during that move. Awesome, embrace the skies and be dynamic with your movement. Inexperienced players often get caught off guard by the zip and jump pad combo. It's almost like they've never actually seen someone move that fast before, and this can really be a huge advantage, allowing us to quickly secure strong positions 
or third party other fights. It's very easy for mediums to do so, but at the same time, the utility isn't just for them, so even your teammates can also follow suit. Finally then, for gadgets, an alternative option is that it's very important to include with your reserves is the APS turret. Now, this is actually a must for mediums loadouts when you're playing in a more competitive based team. Not only can it give you an advantage in some fights acting as some cover, there are actually also as well some added bonuses to note with stealing cash outs that can actually eat the C4 from a heavy when you go to steal. Something that still actually takes many players by surprise. A cool thing to mention as well is that you can actually be very creative with the APS if you have a strong reaction time and quickly place one down below you if a heavy is about to unleash a tasty RPG round. I like to say in the finals, if you think outside the box, the game will reward you. And we've really seen that display in the clips that have been sent to us from Vertigo. I mean, he's a medium main, but his knowledge doesn't just stop there. We both agreed that it's actually very important to play light and heavy as well, just so you can enhance your overall knowledge on the game. A good example is when I actually learned that while facing a light, you can evade and outgun them with movement, extra health and DPS. They have to be very precise in their shots to get the kills and typically reload more often than a medium, so being a hard target to hit can help out a lot. LH1 is still very strong and will put you in a losing position, but if you aren't a stationary target, the light player should struggle to land headshots necessary to beat your time to kill. That and he has 15 bullets, so if he commits to too many missed headshots, he can't finish you with just body shots. Another example is whilst playing heavy, it really helped me understand how valuable the AK is to quickly take out shields. Even in instances where I was fighting in one v ones I noticed that the M60 has insane damage falloff, so keeping a distance against the heavy should win you that fight. That's an interesting perspective, but I completely agree that everyone should put themselves in their opponent's shoes. Maybe there are things that you would notice playing as other roles compared to never knowing because you only stuck with medium. Alright, so let's talk about the actual fights and combat. I think as a medium player, one of the harder questions is how do we balance the decision to contribute to the gunfire or actually hang back and support the team? I have a sole belief that you're the biggest threat when you use your weapons. I think that mediums have the best guns in the game, so once you give up your aggressive role, you have to default into healing your teammates, usually the heavy to make a play. I think that your life is really valuable given the defib option, but I wouldn't play hero when it's too risky to revive. I noticed that teams tend to overcommit to mediums, so I do think that you can abuse the gadgets for movement to become a harder target to hit, draw the gunfire towards you, whilst your team fights them. I think that it's fine to play like this if there is another medium to revive you after you've given the team an easier gunfight. Perfect. And within those fights, there are a lot of outcomes. And of course, it would be super difficult to break down every single fight and every single scenario for our viewers. But as a general guidance for the people watching this video, I think that improvement is something that we all strive for. Vertigo has a core belief in movement which should be one of the primary things you should look to master as soon as you can in this game. Whilst you have a decent health pool, the best guns and all this utility, you need to master movement to be effective in switching up DPS and healing. We will be likely making a guide just based on movement in the future, but for now, focus on maximizing the pad and zip combination. I'd go as far to even say that it's not just about gunplay or just about healing, because not even aimbot level aim will take you to beating opponents without fast movement. Practice testing out the mobility offered in the game to understand how it works, and then blend it with your combat. It really takes the game to another level when you master all the movement to a point when nobody can be ready for you. I want to express my thanks to Vertigo for sharing his insights with us and spending time with myself to create this really comprehensive video to introduce you to the Medium contestant. We'll be going back to Medium shortly to provide you with a fully advanced guide at the game's full release, but for now, this should get you flying as you enter into the world of the finals. Once again, thank you for having me. I hope this guide helps level the playing field as close beta 2 has become a little state to me with so little competition. I hope to see all the mediums with AK-47 ready to clap me back. No worries, and I hope that you all at home excel with this information and really find strong differences in-game to outskill your opponents. Please check out Vertigo's social medias, which are linked below. I personally enjoyed watching his montage from the last playtest, so check that out. He's already given the green light for a potential collaboration in the future for movement and some more, so hit the like button to show us that you're interested for more. To my viewers, if you found value in this guide, please share it around with your friends during this Beta 3, also on Discord as well, to basically just try and help the people get back up to speed with the other mediums, and don't forget to subscribe. And of course, as always, until next time, I'll see you on the podium.